Alley Cats and new viewers. So today is part one of my November 2016 favorites. If you're new to the channel and don't know what favorites are, that's pretty much where I list everything I loved in the entertainment industry. I always split these into two parts because I have way too many favorites and it'd be way too long of a video, so you get two for the price of one! I did my math correctly this time. So without further ado, let's get started. A book I really, really enjoyed this month was I Am Not a Serial Killer by Dan Wells. This book is about a teenager named John Wayne Cleaver. He has sociopathic and serial killer tendencies and he has made a set of rules for himself so he can't interact with people for a certain amount of time. He can't think certain thoughts. But then a series of murders start happening in his town and it just becomes so fascinating to him and the demon inside of him just wants to come out and it's just such a fun interesting story it totally went in a direction i wasn't expecting so if you're into crime novels and you want a fresh take on the crime genre i do highly recommend i am not a serial killer this is a series so i'm excited to continue on with it but i actually really enjoyed it and like i said i was surprised by the direction it took now moving on to the most jam-packed section of the favorites, movies. And guys, I started the 365 day film challenge because apparently doing a 100 day film challenge wasn't enough for me. So you're going to hear about a lot of movies, so just be prepared. And for the movies that I have watched during the challenge, you'll see written reviews for in my description box down below. But the first movie I really enjoyed was A Light Beneath Their Feet. This just came out on Netflix recently and it stars Madison Davenport, who is the main reason I watched this, and also Taryn Manning. But the story is about a teenager, played by Madison Davenport, who has to take care of her mother. Her mother is played by Taryn Manning and her mother is bipolar and she regularly goes off of her medication and she just views the world in a different way than most people do. So Madison Davenport's character has to decide whether she wants to go off to college and pursue her dreams or stay at home, go to a local college and take care of her mother. I was really fascinated by this film because of the mental illness aspect of it. I love films that deal with mental illness and I thought this was done pretty well. Madison Davenport did a fantastic job as the lead actress. Taryn Manning did Taryn Manning very well. If you've seen her in Orange is the New Black, she has a similar kind of personality in this film. Overall, I really enjoyed it. Is it a perfect movie? No, but it's good. It's a fun watch and it is a sobering watch as well. So I do recommend watching it if that's something you're into. Next film up is Pontypool. Pontypool is a Canadian independent film mostly set in one location which is a radio station and it follows the host of a radio show and his crew members as the movie goes along they start to realize that there's this zombie like virus being spread and that there's a certain way it's being spread and it's just a really interesting take on the genre it's not your typical zombie film it's not your typical you know a virus infects humanity kind of film and it's really unique because like i said it does take place in one location for the majority of the film the actors are really good and it's just a really fun time so if you're looking for a horror film that has a fresh take on the zombie virus genre definitely check out Pontypool. The next film I really really loved was The House at the End of Time. The House at the End of Time is a movie for people that enjoy movies like The Orphanage and The Others. This is very much in the similar vein of those. The House at the End of Time is about a woman who has been in prison for 30 years because apparently she murdered her husband and presumably her son even though he had never been found and she gets released from prison on the condition that she has to move back into the house where her husband was found murdered and she has to be put under house arrest. As you go along you see what happened to her family and it's just a very intriguing film. It's not like scary scary, it's more of a psychological film. There are a few jump scares that are actually really effective and I loved the narrative of this story. I love the ending. It's so good. I won't say what happens, but like I said, if you're a fan of The Orphanage, The Others, that kind of movie, definitely check out The House at the End of Time. A movie that most people hated but I actually really enjoyed was X-Men Apocalypse. I'm a huge X-Men fan. I even liked X-Men Last Stand, X-Men Origins Wolverine, those films. So I did enjoy X-Men Apocalypse. Is it the best X-Men film out of the slate? 
Definitely not, but it's not that bad. Yes, it is overstuffed and a little bit too long. Yes, the plot is a little messy, but I did enjoy it for what it was. Quicksilver just stole the movie like he did in Days of Future Past. That scene was so epic. That's my favorite scene out of the entire film is the Quicksilver scene. But I love getting to see Jean Grey and Scott Summers as young teens first meeting. I love seeing Apocalypse and his four horsemen. I pretty much just love this film and I know it's not the best X-Men film and it's not perfect, but I didn't see why I got bashed so much. I just recently watched this movie for the first time and it makes me a little bit ashamed to admit that, but that is Child's Play. I freaking loved it. It holds up well today. It was made, I believe, in 1988 and the effects are still pretty incredible today. And of course, everyone knows what Child's Play is about. It's about a doll named Chucky who is possessed by the spirit of a serial killer named Charles Lee Ray. He is bought by a mother who wants to give her son the good guy's doll that he's been wanting for forever. And everyone knows the story of Chucky and it's just taken me forever to watch it, but I love it and I can't wait to watch the rest of the films, even the crappier ones. I'm excited. The next film I really enjoyed was Monsters. Monsters is the first film that Gareth Edwards directed. And even though it's called Monsters, this is certain more on the people. This stars Scoot McNary and Whitney Abel, who are actually a married couple in real life. But it explores how he is trying to help her get back to the United States. There is a wall between the United States and Mexico because of the monsters that are inhabiting the world at the moment. And it's just their journey and how they interact with each other and how they deal with this basically post-apocalyptic type of world where you have to wear gas masks. You can't stay out past a certain time. It's just a very fascinating movie. Don't go into it expecting a monster film or a horror film because it's not really either of those. It just has horror elements and monster elements in it. It's a very good film and Scoot and Whitney have amazing chemistry and it's just very well done. Next up is Fish Tank. This is the film that Andrea Arnold made her name with and this is, I believe, Michael Fassbender's first movie role. The Fish Tank is about a 15 year old girl named Mia who lives with her mom and younger sister and one day her mom brings home a really really hot boyfriend who Mia is drawn to immediately because I mean who would not be drawn to Michael Fassbender? Come on. You see how he changes everyone in this family's lives and the impact he has both positive and negative. It's just a really good slice of life type of film. Now, if you don't enjoy films that are stream of consciousness style, where it's just like naturally flowing like day-to-day -day life, you won't like Fish Tank. But if you're into that kind of film and you enjoy seeing how others' lives play out and you like seeing just spontaneous things happen, that's what this movie is and you'll love it. So I really enjoyed Fish Tank and I recommend that you watch it if you're into stream of consciousness, slice of life films. Now moving on to the movies that I actually watched for the 365 Day Film Challenge. The first one up is Dead Snow. I absolutely loved it. It's a fresh take on the zombie genre. It's gory and over the top. It has nods to films like Evil Dead and Friday the 13th to it. And I highly recommend it if you're a fan of zombie films and horror films and you want a fresh take on the genre, check out Dead Snow. Next up is Doctor Strange. I absolutely love Doctor Strange. I'm probably overhyping the film. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. But I really loved it. I love the origin story of Stephen Strange. Who's messaging me? I'm making a video. You video bombed me. But I love the origin story of Stephen Strange. Benedict Cumberbatch was fantastic as the jerky, arrogant neurosurgeon who loses the ability to be a neurosurgeon in a grisly car accident. Rachel McCabs was great as Christine Palmer, his love interest. Tilda Swinton was amazing as the Ancient One, and Mads Mikkelsen was great as the villain Cassilius. Do I wish they would have fleshed out Caecilius more? Yes. But for the most part, I was really happy with this film. It blew my expectations out of the water. It's a beautiful film. The effects are out of this world. It's amazing. Especially considering Scott Derrickson went from Sinister, a very small, low-budget horror film, to Doctor Strange, this very ambitious, colorful, effects-heavy Marvel film. And I think he did a very good job, and I cannot wait to see Doctor Strange in more Marvel Cinematic Universe films. The next film up, again, is a film that a lot of people bashed, and I don't really understand why, and that's The Legend of Tarzan. Again, this is not a perfect film, but if you're into the story of Tarzan, it's worth your watch, because Alexander Skarsgård makes a very good Tarzan slash John Clayton III 
Yes, his British accent comes and goes, so it's a little bit spotty, but other than that, he plays the part beautifully. He has amazing chemistry with Margot Robbie, who plays Jane, his wife. Samuel L. Jackson, you can just tell he's having so much fun with his role, and he steals every scene he's in. The only problem I had with this film was Christoph Waltz. His character, he is usually such a fantastic villain in films, but his character just felt very underdeveloped, and he didn't seem like a very menacing threat. He was more of a dog with a bark, but he made other dogs do his dirty work for him, basically. And also, they had Jaiman Hunsu, who is a major talent, but he was so underutilized, and he just felt like he was inserted into the movie for padding. But the acting was great overall. The film is gorgeous. And again, if you're into Tarzan, this will be interesting to you. I really enjoyed it. Is it flawed? Yes, but it doesn't deserve all the hate it's gotten. And the last film, woohoo, for this segment is The Host. No, not the Stephanie Meyer-based film adaptation, but the film by Bong Joon-ho, who also directed Snowpiercer. Now, I went into The Host pretty much blind, so I'm not going to say what happens because I feel like it benefits you more if you don't know what's really going on. But I will say this deals with a family, a father, his three children, and then his granddaughter. And it deals with how this monster has suddenly invaded the Han River in Seoul, South Korea, and how people survive. It's very fascinating. The pacing is unusual because the beginning of the film is very fast-paced and action-packed. The majority of the film, the middle, the meat of the film, is slower paced and more slow burning. But if you stick with it, you'll be rewarded because you'll slowly find twists being uncovered and you'll see where the narrative is heading. And then the end, again, is very fast and action-packed. But I really enjoyed this film. It was a fantastic monster film and I highly recommend it if that sounds interesting to you. Now moving on to the games I enjoyed this month. First up is Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. This is free currently if you're a PS Plus member. And if you're a fan of walking simulators, this is one of the best I've played. You go around this small town in England and you follow these orbs of light and these orbs of light lead you to houses and to radios and telephones. And you piece together the story of why this village is suddenly empty, why everyone has vanished. And it's so fascinating and it's such a good story and it takes you to unexpected places narratively and I just really enjoyed it. Also, I've been playing a lot of Doom, the 2016 version. It's hard, but I love it and even though I do die a lot because you have limited health and ammo and you get swarmed with enemies, I find myself going back to play it because it's just so much fun. The YouTuber I've really enjoyed this month is The Book Hoarder. Now, but obviously by her name, she does talk about books, she does book unboxings and reviews, but lately she's been doing vlogs every day for November, and I find them really fascinating because she talks not just about books, but about what's going on in the world, her experience with working in retail, her life, and she's just so adorable and so relatable and likable. I highly recommend her videos. Again, her name is The Book Hoarder, and she's just so, so stinking cute. It's it's stupid. I, I'm jealous of Dana. She's just so cute. And all the music I enjoyed is in the description box down below. Give the songs a listen. Let me know what you think. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave me a like. And if you like the video, share it because that helps me out a ton. And if you're not subscribed yet and you'd like to see more of my face and hear more of this southern accent that people apparently love to death, click my face floating over here somewhere because that's how you subscribe to my channel. And also, Click that bell underneath me where it says subscribe as well because that will notify you of all my videos and you can watch them as soon as they're uploaded. If you'd like to follow me on social media sites, all those links will be in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching. Peace and kisses. Bye!